Hey folks, we're at Dinosaur Ledge at Colorado. So this ridge here in front of us is pretty important, paleontologically speaking. Catfish, what can you tell us? Well, the very first spike-tailed dinosaur ever was discovered here at Dinosaur Ridge Stegosaurus. 1877, wasn't it? Yeah. What happened after they discovered that? Well, it made a whole lot of paleontologists want to discover more fossils in America. Yeah. Similar to how you had the 1849 gold rush out in California, the finds here spurred on the uh, dinosaur bone rush, I guess you would say. Yeah. The road along the ridge is closed to all traffic except the tour bus, foot traffic like Catfish and I, and bikes. So this area here of shale is from the remnants of the Western Interior Seaway back when the entire state of Colorado was part of the Inland Sea. So within this shale, you can find fossils of everything from fo uh, shark teeth, fish scales, fossil clams, ammonites, those kind of things could all be found within this section. I believe I have just found a trace fossil here as you notice there's a couple indentations that may be burrows or something that, that's not the actual organism itself but something it left behind. It might be a shark tooth for some horn coral. A lot of this sandstone here was the bottom of a shallow flowing water and a lot of these holes in them were burrows from ancient clams. Up here on the side of this rock, see what looks like scratch marks. That is where crocodile used to swim across this ocean, very shallow areas. And that's the claw marks left behind as they push themselves along the bottom of the water. There's more of your clam holes, burrows. This was a tidal channel, so it was kind of like a channel that raised and lowered, and that's why you had so many clams and crocodiles in it. So that there would have been an impression of a root or tree branch. This would have kind of been like a, a mangrove forest area in the tidal region. So here we can see ripple marks from an ancient shoreline. If you've ever been to any kind of beach, you see the ripple marks in the sand where the water just slowly creates the ripple marks. And here you see one frozen in time. So here we're at the main track site, dinosaur tracks all over the side here. They were uncovered in 1937 during some road construction. Catfish, can you tell us what could have made these tracks? Eolambia, Acrocanthosaurs, and Nephilimids. That's what they believe most likely made these tracks. Now they're really clear in this video because the park has shaded the tracks, otherwise it'd be a lot more difficult to make out. Right beside this big one here at the bottom of my screen, there is another one right beside it. The catfish noticed that they did not paint in. So that tells us there are more tracks here, even more than what are actually shaded. It really makes you wonder how many of these kind of natural sites like this are out there waiting to be discovered or just being wiped away by construction. Dinosaur Ridge is located in Morrison, Colorado. 
It's at the foothills of the Rocky Mountains. As you can see the ridge back here, when you turn around, here you've got the town of Morrison. Very busy highway. It's kind of like you gotta wear modern society and prehistoric areas collide. Pretty much. So all of this sandstone here behind us would have formed during the Cretaceous period, 100 million years ago, before the Rocky Mountains had even uplifted at all. So this different coloring here, what is that about, catfish? That is a layer of volcanic ash from about 104 million years ago. Yeah, apparently there was a volcano hundreds of miles away that blew up and the ash carried here deposited it in what at that time would have been a swamp. So here is your ash layer stuck in time. The back side of this ridge you really got some beautiful scenery back here in the foothills of the Rockies. This is literally where the Rockies begin. Now the red rock that you see there actually predates the Rockies. It was from a 280 million years ago, mountain building. They believe a 11 and a half foot long theropod made that footprint. Oh, what kind of theropod could it have been? May have been either a most likely an allosaurus, but it could also be a torvosaurus or a ceratosaurus. Wow. Pretty awesome, huh? Yeah. So these layers of sandstone here in the very late Jurassic period. There's one other very famous dinosaur that's been discovered here at Dinosaur Ridge. What was it, Catfish? The Apatosaurus. That's right, the Apatosaurus. Some people still like to think of it as the Brontosaurus. But... And on these layers here, you'll notice this big deformation right here. That's not natural. That is from an apatosaurus footprint. You're seeing it from the side. In fact, underneath, you can still see the skin. It basically left its fingerprints there. Get up under there, catfish, and take a look at that. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. How does it feel? Can you touch it? Feels weird. <laughs> you're basically you touch it. you're touching the bottom of an apatosaurus footprint. Yeah. Yeah. And that's not the only one in here, though. There's another bulge in the back here. It's not as obvious, of course, but you can see the deformation there. And uh, they believe these are its two back feet. So you got that foot over there. And then that's a good 10 to 12 feet over to this one. So that kind of shows you how wide this animal was. Yeah. How big was the Apatosaurus catfish? 90 feet long. Yeah, 90 feet long. How much did it usually weigh? Like 40 tons. 40 tons. So that's why it left such huge footprints. And they just got lucky enough that that mud that it stepped in hardened this way to leave the evidence for us to see. Yep. As you look at this whole ridge here, you find there's a lot more than just those two prints that Catfish and I pointed out. Right there is a foot impression. There's probably one. There's one. And there's one. So there's a whole set of tracks. We're just seeing them from the side, basically. Actually, at the dinosaur bone quarry. Point something out to me, Catfish. This appears to be the leg bone of one of your theropods right there. The bone sticking out right there. As well as that. What formation is this? This is part of the Morrison formation. The same formation that we saw the bones of the dinosaur monument at.
National, national Monument? Yep. All right. So this is a national natural landmark designated. There we have more bones in the rock. Dun dun dun. Jurassic spider. We got more bone in this thing. It's huge. Yeah. It's just a little up when it goes again. The road doesn't actually go through. We've got more bones. So that's our little hike around Dinosaur Ridge here. There's definitely some interesting stuff. What did you think about the, uh, the ridge? It was pretty, pretty cool. It had some big old bones, and there were definitely a few cool footprints in there. Yeah, I really like the tracks. Now, if you happen to ever come here, just know you're not getting out into the wilderness. There's a lot of traffic around here. You got to get around. Yep. Um, they do offer little bus tours to go see it, and a little small museum, visitor center type area. Well, not too bad if you happen to be kind of. Uh, dinosaur aficionado like catfish here. Yeah.